All right. Hey, everyone. This is David Brown. Today is March 1st, 2022, and it was the first day of the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch Spring 2022 season. Sorry if my hair is a little messed up. In my apartment here, when you get out of the shower, there's like a hair dryer built into the ceiling that dries your hair while you stand there. And it's like the greatest invention ever, but it makes my hair stick up everywhere. And I forgot to pack a hairbrush, so I'm trying to use a, a comb that's not working that well. So until I get to Wegmans and buy a hairbrush, we're just going to have to deal with it. Let me say that overall today went really well, about as good as you could hope for on a first day. Had about 10 people come out and do some hawk watching and say hello, which was nice. Got to see a lot of my friends that I haven't seen in the past nine months. So thank you for everyone who came out to say hello, and I'm sure many more of you will come out to say hello in the coming weeks. The morning started off cloudy with southerly winds, which was really good for the non-raptor migrants, which we'll get into. And then late morning, early afternoon, the sun popped out for a little bit, which brought us a little bit of a raptor flight. And then as we got later in the afternoon, it became overcast again, and eventually some rain moved in. Uh, the drizzle started around 2.30, and I wrapped up at 3. We had a total of 12 migrating raptors and 43 bird species. All right, let's take a look at some of the photo highlights from today. So when I arrived this morning, the local pair of bald eagles was sitting in what we call the eagle tree because eagles like to sit in that tree. Here's an American crow that flew by with a stick. So I don't know if this is nest building or if it was just being goofy. Here's a herring gull. I saw a lot of herring gulls and ring-billed gulls today. The one really tricky thing is a lot of the gulls are extremely distant. And so it's hard to tell how many ring-billed gulls there are or how many herring gulls. And sometimes you can see a flock and you see that the dark, immature herring gulls are bigger than the others, so the others must be ring-billed. But anyway, it's a big headache trying to estimate gull numbers. Here's a juvenile red-tailed hawk that was hanging out throughout the day, and you can see it's missing a feather in each wing, although it's not the same feather. Interesting. Here's the same red tail on the bottom with a northern harrier above it. Here's a common raven that was diving into the marsh, and... Ravens aren't super rare here, but they're not something we see every day either, so it's, it's always a nice highlight to hear one croaking. Here's a light morph rough-legged hawk that was hanging around. And this photo's not that good, but I thought it was funny how the, uh, the raven was kind of chasing off the rough-legged hawk and croaking at it, like, get out of here, this is my marsh. Here's a kill deer, and, and we actually had 16 kill deer total today, and small groups of up to three individuals and it's a uh, 16 is a pretty high number to get this early in the season um, but again it was just because there were the favorable southerly winds overnight and into the morning i took a walk out to the end of the boardwalk and was just standing there and this adult male northern harrier gray ghost flew right by me so i ended up getting some really nice photos just an excellent look at it and here's a second photo of the same bird. Just absolutely stunning. So the two adult bald eagles that were in the tree took off and were heading over towards where the nest is. And I saw that the second one had something trailing behind it. So I thought maybe it was nesting material. But when I took a closer look, I noticed that it was actually a pair of legs. And someone speculated that this might be an American coot, and I think I might agree with that as well. If you have another idea, leave it in the comments. Um, but definitely, whatever it was, it became a meal. Here is a snowy owl that has been continuing in the area, and this actually sat on the same spot in the ice all day. Um, most of the time it was resting with its head tucked in, Occasionally, it would become alert and look around a little bit or preen a little bit. And eventually, it spun around so it was facing the other direction. Which, now that I think of it, it actually happened after there was a shift in the wind. So I wonder if they prefer to face into the wind, like a lot of birds do, because it makes it easier to take off. This is just the cherry on top to have, especially when people walk up to the platform and you say, Hey, we got a snowy owl on the scope. But... Um, it's also amazing how quickly you get bored of it, because in most birding situations, a snowy owl would be a really big deal, but when you can just stare at it all day, it just doesn't become that special anymore. 
here we have a horned lark and we had small groups of these migrating throughout the day. We had a total of 25. And this is the species that we see in flocks, mostly uh, early to mid-season. And most of these we hear before we see them. So once we hear the high-pitched call, we know to look up and try to spot them. This adult Cooper's hawk was the first migrant counted this season. I really like this shot that I got of American black ducks. There's just something about the contrast between the dark bodies and the white wings combined with the clouds and the blue sky behind them. Red-winged blackbirds are starting to show up in small numbers. I think we had about 16 of these, and we also had a small number of common grackles. Red-winged blackbirds become our friends later in the season because once they start nesting in the marsh, whenever a hawk flies over, especially something like a cooper's hawk or a sharp-shinned hawk down low, the red-winged blackbirds start giving their high-pitched alarm call, so it lets us know to start looking that there's probably a raptor passing through. And here's just another look at a horned lark. We had the first two turkey vultures of the season today that migrated through together. And it'll be about another month until we reach the peak migration time for turkey vultures where we can get as many as 3,000 or more in a single day. Here's a group of common mergansers, and this was the whole group, and I just thought it was funny how they were arranged in a line like that. Here is an adult female northern harrier that glided over at high altitude, so we counted it as a migrant. Adult females can be distinguished from juveniles because the adult females have all this streaking on the upper breast. Juveniles are more orangish underneath, um, but a lot of times by the spring they have faded, so they look just more kind of plain whitish underneath. They don't have all this streaking. Oh, here we go. This is a black beauty, a dark morph rough-legged hawk. This one was hovering over the marsh looking for something to eat. Here we have a woodpecker, and I called it out as a pileated woodpecker. And someone else said, I thought you were a pileated kind of guy. So we had to go into that whole discussion. That, no, I've always said pileated. Unless someone else is pileated first, then I feel some like peer pressure and I stick with pileated. Then someone else started talking about the Latin origin of the name, and that's when the conversation went above my pay grade. But anyway, our final conclusion was that Pileated and pileated are both acceptable pronunciations, but pileated is definitely unacceptable. It's a woodpecker, not a banana. Here we have a light morph rough-legged hawk diving on a red-tailed hawk. Notice that it's not the same juvenile red tail from earlier because this one is not missing any feathers. And here we have a nice adult red-tailed hawk that soared right above us. Now this was the original juvenile red-tailed hawk that we saw in the morning with the missing feathers, and it was hanging out in a tree way off to the right in this photo. And we saw it take off and glide in towards this spot. And as it got closer, we noticed there was something on the ice, and it grabbed it, and it actually was some kind of small rodent, like a mole or vole, something about that size. And as we watched it, it just bent down, it ripped its head off, and it bent down and was ripping out guts. It was really gory and nasty, but it was really quick, the whole process of from catching it and then eating the whole thing. As the day went on, we started to see more and more migrating flocks of tundra swans. I think we had 175 for the day. And many of the flocks were calling, which is one of my favorite sounds to hear during spring migration. And of course, we also have mute swans. And I counted about 120 of them today, but there may have been more out of sight. And actually, we have the largest congregation of mute swans early in the season because right now all of the ponds in the area are frozen. And so they're concentrating in the open area on the far side of Braddock Bay. And I would say when non-birders come up to the platform, the mute swans are probably the either the bird that they comment on or it's the bird they're the most interested in. I think because they're, they're big and obvious and um, it's a bird that maybe they see quite often. Um, they may not understand why birders don't like mute swans, but it can be a way to at least get uh, a conversation started about appreciating birds. 
all of the ducks are concentrated on the open water on the far side of the bay. So even with the scope, it was really hard to be able to identify them. But at one point in the afternoon, a lot of the ducks flushed and some of the flocks came over the platform and gave us a good look. And the most numerous duck out of those groups were redheads. So here's a, a small group of redheads out of a much larger group. There were probably a couple hundred along with um, a lot of scop mixed in and some other species like pintails. So um, it's a really good variety of ducks around right now. It's just hard to um, hard to see from the Hawkwatch platform. But as the bay starts to thaw out, then the ducks will be able to come closer and be more easily identified. And here was the last migrant of the day, a sandhill crane. And actually this one was nice enough to call. So I heard it first and then could look up and it was fairly high. And I, I believe Santo cranes used to be fairly rare in this area in the past, but um, in more recent years, there's something that we see fairly large groups of at the Hawk Watch. And over the course of a season, I don't know, we probably see somewhere in the ballpark of 50 or 75 total. So not really a rarity anymore, but um, something nice to see, especially on the opening day. Here's a quick look at the eBird checklist, and I'll put a link to this. Uh, one thing I want to make note of is the number of Canada geese. Had about 2,750 was my final estimate. And as the day went on, the number of migrating flocks was picking up. Last spring, we had a day with about 60,000 migrating Canada geese. So it can be pretty spectacular when you get a day with southerly winds and you get these huge days of Canada geese, tundra swans, and sometimes even snow geese, just these huge migrations. Okay, and if we take a look at the migrating raptor totals on hawk count, we see we had two turkey vultures, one bald eagle, one northern harrier, one cooper's hawk, five red-tailed hawks, one rough-legged hawk, and this one was a dark morph, and it was super, super high, and it actually was gliding out over the lake last we saw, heading probably approximately northeast. Um, but we're speculating that it um, may have actually crossed the lake. Most of the migrants we get are following the edge of the lake. They don't want to be over the water, but there are certain species that you'll see heading out over the lake, things like peregrine falcons, uh, ospreys, and apparently even rough-legged hawks. And we also had one peregrine falcon that was too distant to get any photos of. And uh, this time of year, anytime you see a large falcon, you should always be considering Jir Falcon, um, but we couldn't really get a, a good enough look to uh, make that a possibility, unfortunately. But one of these days, I'll get one. Okay, and looking at the forecast for the next couple days, tomorrow, cloudy with snow showers in the afternoon, winds west 15 to 25. Those are pretty strong winds. Uh, early in the season like this, not expecting a whole lot on those kind of conditions. Thursday, lingering flurries, then cloudy. Winds northwest of 15 to 30. Again, probably won't be much happening. Friday, partly to mostly cloudy. Winds west at 10 to 15. So if we get a little bit of sunshine and those light westerly winds, those can be okay conditions. But early in the season without south winds, might only get a few migrating raptors on that day. But it seems like a might be a pleasant day to be hanging out at the Hawk Watch. And I just put a note that until you hit mid-March, the totals just tend to be really low unless you get favorable winds, especially southwest. Okay, and just one final story. A lot of you who have visited me at Hawk Watches know that I have my signature orange hat, which if you look at the inside, this is the color it started out as, and it's just faded over time. Well, today, Kent and Susan stopped by, and they brought me a little gift, which was a new orange hat. And this one's really cool. It's... Um, L.L. Bean Cross Peanuts. And who doesn't love peanuts? And it's got this cool patch in the center as well. So kind of a really cool hat. Bit of a collector's item, I think. I don't know if I want to wear it. This might like go up 10 times in value if I save it for a couple years. But anyway, thank you for the new hat. I really appreciate it. All right, well, that's it for today. But we have a lot of hawk watching to come this season, even if the next couple days aren't looking fantastic. So be sure to... Follow on hawkcount.org. You can get the daily totals for the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch as well as all of the Hawkwatches in the country. 
You can also see our live results on Dunkadoo. And both of those update throughout the day. I'm using uh, Dunkadoo to input the data from the field. So you can uh, go onto Dunkadoo or Hawk Count and get real time totals. So if you want to see what we're seeing throughout the day, you can check out those sites. And to check out all of the photos I took throughout the day, you can look at the eBird checklist, which I always link to from the Hawk Count report. All right, good birding, and I hope to see you on the platform soon. This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.